ready to go get something to eat? Let's do it. Let's do it. chatters. Today we're going to talk about our top 10 favorite catfish baits. And uh, you'll learn the baits we use to catch uh, fish like this. All right, you ready to go learn something neat? Okay, so let's get started. Um, first I want to show you my common uh, cut bait rig for catfish. When I'm using cut bait, I always do a double hook rig. And what I do is I tie a, a bell weight at the end, uh, maybe 3 8 ounce to a couple ounces. Uh, catfish don't seem to be real weight shy or line shy. You can go fairly heavy on both, although if you're fishing for channel cat, you don't really need to go above 15 pound test, and if you're, if you're fishing for flathead, uh, 30 pound test is adequate. But I'll tie the weight on, and then I tie two loops. The first loop's about that high up, and so I'm just looping the line and I'm making a loop that long. And then I tie another loop about that high up. And then what I can do once I got my loops is I can run that loop through the eyelet and around the hook and then pull it tight. And then that's my double hook rig for cut bait right there. And what that does, uh, cut bait a lot of times has a tendency to want to fall off or if you get a bite they might not get hooked on the first time they bite it but then you still get that other hook with the other bait on it uh, so it'll work for you. So that's my double hook rig uh, but let's get to it. Okay number 10 on the best catfish baits is stink bait. Uh, I don't have any stink bait with me, but it's basically a dough bait that has a lot of like shad oil and stuff in it, so it smells real fishy. And you want to use a treble hook, and you just mold it on there uh, like a dough so that you're almost covering the points, but it's okay to leave just a little bit of that point on there. And like most of the items we're going to use here today, you basically throw it out and you let it sit and uh, you know you put a bell on your pole or whatever and just wait for the bite. Uh, number nine is a blood bait. Uh, blood bait's also kind of like a dough bait but it's made out of like chicken or beef blood and flour and uh, both of these are going to leave a good scent trail. I do believe the blood bait leaves a little bit better scent trail than the stink bait. Uh, the issue with the blood bait is it wants to fall off the hook a little bit easier. Um, I do use just a standard number two watt hook with blood bait. And then you, uh, sometimes the blood bait's already in chunks. Uh, sometimes it's a dough form. All right, number eight, hot dog. So we're literally talking about your uh, ordinary hot dog that you get from a grocery store. And then you cut it into chunks, uh, oh, about three quarters of an inch long, and use a two watt hook and just hook it one time to the middle. Uh, the nice thing about this bait is there's a good chance you have it in your ice chest when you're out fishing and camping. And uh, it actually works great for a channel catfish. Uh, it's a little bit soft, so once you get one or two bites, it wants to fall off the hook. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty effective, leaves a good scent trail. Okay, number seven. Um, I suspect this is number one on a lot of people's list. 
but it's a uh, chicken liver. So chicken liver, uh, same thing, you get it in the tub at the your regular grocery store. Comes in chunks about that big. You want to use a treble hook, you'll put it on the points, and then there's a little trick that really helps that chicken liver stay on the hook. Get some brown thread, a piece about that long, and once you hook the chicken liver on your hook, wrap that thread around the the chicken liver and the hook several times and it kind of cinches it on there so that you can cast it better. Uh, chicken liver leaves a really good blood trail uh, so that the fish will, you know, catfish are kind of like the hound dogs of the water. They'll smell uh, something that they want to eat from a long ways off and they'll work their way over to it. Uh, chicken liver is great. Uh, Definitely, a, you'll catch a lot of fish on chicken liver. Uh, number six, raw shrimp. Raw shrimp, I use uh, just a single hook, and it's almost like shrimp were made to be used as bait because they're shaped at the same curvature that your hook is. And, uh, you know, same thing, do the double hook rig. Uh, you can catch them off cooked shrimp. I do believe the raw is better. Uh, you know, make sure you keep it in your cooler so that it, it stays fresh like you we think of catfish liking stinky rotten stuff and sometimes they do uh, But I believe they like that natural fresh scent even more and so uh, The only reason I put raw shrimp ahead of chicken liver I Believe you might even catch more catfish on the chicken liver although a similar amount but the nice thing about the raw shrimp is you can always build a little fire while you're waiting for the bite and uh, roast some shrimp. Or if you don't catch anything that day, you go home and have a shrimp dinner instead, which maybe is better than if you caught something. Uh, so raw shrimp, number six. Okay, number five, a live minnow. Um, I don't have a live minnow with me, but essentially you want an inch and a half to three inch minnow and what I do is I take like a number four hook and I'll hook it right behind the dorsal fin um, or sometimes I'll come up through the chin and come out a nostril and I'll just use a single uh, split shot weight I'll use a split shot have about 14 inches of line and then I'll have my minnow and the nice thing about live bait is once that split shot hits the bottom, that minnow's swimming around, really catches fish's attention. It does leave a little scent trail. Uh, it's killer on channel catfish. If you get big enough minnows, it'll work on flatheads. And the other neat thing about fishing with minnows is you can catch a lot of other species. You can catch uh, bass, pike, walleye. Uh, you know, everything likes a minnow. So there's that bonus feature of a live minnow. Uh, number four, a live bluegill. Now, if I was fishing for flathead catfish, this would be my number one bait by far. Uh, but you'll want a bluegill. If you're fishing for channel catfish, you maybe want them in the two to three inch range. If you're fishing for flathead, you would want a bluegill this big at the smallest, but they could even be you know, very large. But I'll use a large treble hook, I'll hook them right behind the dorsal fin with one point. And then I'll have about uh, 12 inches of line and it'll run through my weight so I have a slider sinker rig. And I'll just have a little swivel there to keep the sinker from getting closer. But you'll throw it out, let it sit on the bottom. And, you know, I would fish them in like oh say five to twelve feet of water and it's it's phenomenal how good a live bluegill works for large channel catfish there's really no better bait than a live bluegill it's just uh, sometimes you're keeping yourself from being able to catch smaller catfish by using a live bluegill um, if you're in waters though that mostly have large channel catfish I would I would use that uh, as opposed to anything else Okay, number three, 
a live Nightcrawler. So what I do is I use a split shot and then I have about 12 inches of line and I tie a number six hook, which you might think that seems kind of small. But what I'm doing is I'm hooking that hook just a half inch from the head of the worm, so like that. So the majority of that worm is free to squirm around. He's not bound up on the hook. And then what I do is I inject the worm with air. This is a worm blower. I put it in like the back third and I just give it one squeeze and that'll slightly inflate this uh, worm where when that split shot's on the bottom of the lake, your worm's sitting up like that and it's just squirming around. And same thing, you just throw it out and let it sit, but that worm is constantly moving. It's leaving a scent trail. It's also very visual because it's up off the bottom. And it works great on channel cats. You can also catch flathead on these. Uh, it's killer on bass too as well, or walleye. Uh, if you are going to specifically bass fish, go ahead and work it like you would a soft plastic bait. Like let it hit the bottom and then, uh, you know, have that worm squirming. Move it a little bit, let it squirm again. That's if you're bass fishing. If you're cat fishing though, just throw it out. It'll float up off the bottom there. And again, about 12 inches, and that worm will just be moving the whole time. So, live Nightcrawler. Okay, number two. A live Water Dog. And about this size is what you want for channel cats. If you're going to fish for a uh, flathead, you can, you know, you can get Water Dogs that are almost a foot long and and that's great uh, but I use like on water dogs this size I'll use a number four hook and I'm coming up to the chin and out one nostril and then uh, same thing I'm using like a bell weight and then about oh 12 inches of line and then I have my water dog and he's swimming around he's kind of doing the same thing the minnow's doing uh, the difference is I think the water dog even leaves a little more scent trail than a minnow. Plus they're real hardy. You throw them out and until you get a bite, he's for sure going to be on the hook and he's going to be alive. Uh, so number two, live water dog. Okay, the number one, here it is. This is my favorite catfish bait. It is... Cut anchovies. Uh, this obviously isn't an anchovy. It's a it's a crankbait, but it's about the size of an anchovy and about the right color. So what I do is I don't fish the whole anchovy. I take the anchovy like this and I cut the head off just right behind the gills, and then I cut the fins off of the tail. So now I have that much left, and then what I do is I cut the anchovy in half, and that's my two pieces for my double hook rig. And then I put uh, a piece on each hook. You want to keep your anchovies frozen, so what I do is I uh, freeze them in our deep freezer, and then I have a soft cooler that I keep them in with a gallon jug of hard froze ice, and then I put that soft cooler inside our regular cooler so that if you're at the lake a couple days, they still stay frozen. Uh, Cut anchovies leave a superior scent trail. Uh, you'll notice when you're handling them, your fingers and all that, um, you know, your wife or girlfriend don't want to get around you after that. Uh, but the good news is you're going to catch fish. Yeah, so you got your two halves of anchovies on there. Same thing, you throw it out, let it sit on the bottom, reel up most of your slack, but just have a gentle curve to your line and then put a bell on your pole and wait. Uh, once they hit the lake and thaw out, now they're really soft, so they're not always real easy to recast. You kind of have to put new bait on each time you cast. Uh, but unless you're getting a bite, there's no need to recast it. Uh, I would check it every hour or so with any of these cut baits uh, in case you got a crawdad or something or a bite that you weren't aware of and it took your bait off. Uh, so once again, I do the double hook rig with the cut baits, but if I have a live bait, uh, 
And you can do that double hook rig with treble hooks, like for your stink bait or chicken liver. Or you can use your single hooks for hot dogs, blood bait, shrimp. Uh, but with live bait, like the night crawlers, bluegill, water dogs, and minnows, I don't do a double hook rig, I do a single hook. Because you want that live bait to be able to move around and uh, not be restricted. Uh, the other neat thing about cut anchovies, if you're in a lake that also has stripers, this is like the number one bait for stripers. And so uh, hopefully this information was helpful. And uh, we'll see you next time when we go get something to eat. And don't forget to subscribe. It's free and it helps us out. Thank you.